Myanmar. I shall be your host for today's event and I welcome you all to this uh, second prime talk. Before I uh, introduce our speaker today, I would like to briefly tell all the participants about the prime talk. Prime talk is pain insights, research and management. So this is a global event that has been created by Zydus to help doctors, facilitate doctors in terms of improving their knowledge base with the latest advancements and the approaches in the management pain. We already had first prime talk on in the month of May, which the topic was uh, the advances in orthoscopic repair surgery in a box, which was presented by Dr. Prathamesh Jain, where Professor uh, Mentong was our uh, panelist and also Dr. Sunit Chandranathni from Sri Lanka was the panelist. Today's topic of uh, prime talk two is advances in musculoskeletal ultrasound. And our speaker is Professor Mientong. Professor Mientong is Emeritus Professor in Orthopedics from the University of Medicine One, Yangon. He is also the President of Myanmar Wound Care Society, and also he is the Chair of Board of Orthopedics in Myanmar. Beyond the designations that Professor Mientong hold, he lives in the hearts of every orthopedic in Myanmar. He is one of the most respected and revered orthopedician in Myanmar. And I'm very happy to have him with us today. From Sri Lanka, we have Dr. Dilsan Munidasa. I welcome Dr. Dilsan Munidasa as our panelist today. And with that introduction, I would like to hand over the session to Professor Myantong to deliver his talk on advances in musculoskeletal ultrasound. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. I'm Dr. Nguyen Tong from Myanmar. First of all, I would like to thank Sajjus Katila allowing me to participate in the second Prime Talk. This is my second time participation in the Prime Talk. And it is also, I'm very much proud to be as a speaker in this special topic upon advances in musculoskeletal ultrasound. I should admit that even though I'm not technically a expert in this specialty field, I have been doing practicing with a lot of ultrasound technology with my colleagues in the radiological department, our rehabilitation department, our imaging specialists and our anesthesiologists in both public and private practice. So I know and very much familiar with this clinical application and benefits of ultrasound in the musculoskeletal disorders. I do hope that our honorable panelists Dr. Dushan may share his personal experience and country experience and may add on my presentations to be a beautiful scientific meeting today. Let me move to the mirror. So today, our line of my presentation will start with the just an overview and evolution of the ultrasound in the clinical setting. How are we going to optimize the image and how to interpret 
the lesions. What are the reasons, advances in the clinical application about the ultrasounds? How the ultrasonography imaging technology has been innovated in the recent years? The established guideline for the clinical usage of ultrasound in modern world. What are the advantages and limitations? I think I can touch two perspectives on the each topic. The first of all, the overview of ultrasounds. I do believe that everybody has well known that ultrasound machine and technology has been used for long, long ago in the shipping industry with the sound reflections. But for the clinical usage, it has been introduced around 1940s. And ultrasound as in non-ionizing sound waves to produce 2, 3, or 3D, and now the 4 degree scale images are using now. But so skeletal ultrasound is very accurate, good patient profile, with the safety, affordable costs, efficient clinical application, and also can use as a dynamic imaging. There are many applications starting from the diagnostic, as well as therapeutic, as well as prognostic factors after treatment of the lesions. Definitely there is no radiation and sometimes, in particular case, we can use only the injectable contrast. The actual discovery of the ultrasound has been studied since 1942 by the Carl first used the sonogram for the medical diagnosis by transmitting ultrasound beam through the skull of the human in order to detect the brain tumors. In clinical usage, Professor Landonner of Association from the Glasgow Royal Maternity Hospital first used diagnostic machine to determine the diameter of the fetal heart in 1956. The evolution of musculoskeletal ultrasound has been quite interesting to learn that around the 1958, it started with the normal anatomical distribution of the musculoskeletal system with the ultrasound, and then shift into the 1972 with the abnormal description of the musculoskeletal systems. Since then, after 1972, there are a wide range of clinical uses among the developed and developing countries with all the technical research and publication has been introduced round about in 1991. After the development of the color Doppler technology of the ultrasounds in 1994, the dynamic imaging technology of the ultrasound has been introduced. In 20th century onwards, the wide range of clinical uses of musculoskeletal systems and research technology has been improved with many publication papers throughout the world. How do we optimize and interpret the image? Initially, when we are young, we know that ultrasound is only for the purpose of soft tissue imaging only. But with the advanced technology and innovative ultrasound technology, currently it can apply on the bone get leash adjacent pentostan, tissue perfusion, degenerated process and neoplastic process as well. There is also correlation feature imaging has been developed in order to correlate in between the clinical pictures, pathological pictures and prognostic as well. It can also detect the bone mineralizations Minimally invasive usage of the intraarticular probe assessment of the joint, get leash, can also detect the 
very early OE changes like surface revelations. The dynamic technology with the color Doppler can quantify as well as qualify alteration and the vascularity as well as tissue perfusion. Ultra fast Doppler ultrasound blood flow signal in very small vessels in brain perfusion has been introduced in 21st century. What is the minimal features of ultrasound machine for the musculoskeletal diagnosis? The commonly usage of the linear broadband transducers up to five to 13 megahertz with the ultrasound focusing at the depth of no more than five millimeter. There is also useful convex transducer two to six megahertz for the imaging of the obese patients and when do we examine the deeper structures. Harmonic imaging technology has been developed and also special compound imaging with CT and MRI software can complement the our detailed surgical procedure as well as diagnosis procedures in the musculoskeletal disorders. The color and power Doppler ultrasound technology can detect the microcirculations of the tissue as well as perfusion of the soft tissue as well. There are two important aspects of the ultrasound in the interpretation. That is optimization of the image in order to detect tissue pathology in detail. And second important aspect is image interpretation. A linear transducer environment is a common tools to detect the upper extremity ultrasound scanning, and it is available in with the high frequency up to 10 to 15 megahertz. Image optimization by doing the optimal setting for the mode of the ultrasounds described the pertinent knowledge and use of ultrasound equipment to achieve the best settings application body patient care. All the industrial guidelines of ultrasound producers has been adopted. The detailed setting of the ultrasound to achieve quality imaging. Regarding the image and the practition, the user has to reduce the artifact by doing sound being not perpendicular to the long axis of the structures. If the sound beam is perpendicular to the linear structures at 90 degree perpendicular, the reflection is optimized. Any degree of deviation of five degree beam angulation can result in the artifact, especially in the soft tissue of the tendons and ligaments. So how do we apply the musculoskeletal ultrasound? It's a wide range of usage identifying the soft tissue foreign body, peripheral nerve injuries, dynamic imaging for the flow, imaging around the hardware, this is very beneficial for the hardware associated infection, guided procedures for the pain, identifying the focal tendon abnormalities and tendon instability, evaluation of the cyst fluid collection as well as the tumor biopsy as well. ID alternative and complement to the MI for imaging superficial structures has been replaced as the affordable technology. Instead of doing MI, we can even detect the catalyst surface fibrillations, associated synovitis, and even the defect in the articular surface. With the use of the ultrasound, we can detect the foreign body inside the soft tissue as small as 0.5 millimeter. It is very beneficial to have identification of the non-radio-opaque wood and plastic foreign materials can be identified and which can usefully guide to the surgical removal and surgical marking for the removal of the foreign body. 
regarding the peripheral nerve, the evolution of the peripheral nerve with the very sound resolutions and available to examine the entire limb within a short period of time. It can allow the visualization of the individual nerve fascicles as a honeycomb or speckle shaped appearance in the transfer dimension, like in this picture. Dynamic invasion is, has been developed after the 19th century, considered as imaging method of choice in the evaluation of the musculoskeletal disorder where dynamic imaging is required, especially for the dynamic movement of the joints, dynamic movement of the ligaments and muscle contraction, as well as blood flow and local perfusion of the soft tissue as well. It's very much useful in the trauma practice, something like the tendon and nerve stabilization or dislocation, snapping syndrome, muscle herniation, impingement syndrome, and partial or complete tear of the tendons and ligaments. Imaging around the hardware in the orthopedic practice is very useful because especially in the underdeveloped countries, we don't have the dynamic MI to detect the surrounding soft tissue implant related infections. With the usage of the, this ultrasound technology, we can easily identify the soft tissue collection and infection around the hardware we can easily get the ultrasound guided aspiration for diagnosis as well as therapeutic purpose. Ultrasound is also very useful for our anesthesiologists and pain specialists, as well as our orthopedic surgeon as a guided procedures for the any soft tissue lesions, quite safe and effective. As I'm very much concerned with the, our pain care center, ultrasound guided regional analgesias for the limb surgery and post-operative pain control after the, to the joint replacements. It can give us the virtual real-time needle position accuracy for the, our regional nerve block, including SN joint and spine facet joint. Many conditions of degenerated arthritis and tendinitis, myofascialgia, myofascial pain can be successfully treated with the serial ultrasound therapy by improving the pain relief, improve the local circulation, reduce the local spasm, as well as facilitate the tissue regeneration after the injury. It can also detect very clearly the tendon abnormalities by seeing the surface technology and also focal hypoechoic tendon defect, morphology of the bustles, as well as cortical irregularity and joint infusion as well. It's very useful in the our rotator cuff there around the shoulder joint with associated articular surface intrasubstant, partial or complete tear can be easily identified. And it is quite comparable information like MRI, which is very expensive. This is a picture of a and retracted tendon also we can see it here. In case of the Bakers, with the degenerated also arthritis, whether the cyst is communicating with the joint or not, we can clearly see with the ultrasound technology. Another one is lower ultrasound therapy in Hunke, especially very much concerned with the diabetes cell. We do available with our handheld ultrasound to detect local tissue perfusion and to detect the peripheral arterial disease when we are doing what wrong. And also in the OT, we can use the ultrasonic wound depleter for the acute and chronic wound, 
which give us the ultra cleanliness of the necrotic debris and bacteria colonies, improve tissue hydration and perfusion, improve collagenization and neovalization of the wound, decrease the wound exudation, painless and comfortable after the operation, faster the epidemialization and reduce the wound size, and also improve, finally improve the wound biology and faster the healing. <clears throat> Over the past few years, after 20th century, there is a after some technology innovation has been very much improved and wide range of clinical application as a real time performance, high tissue resolution, improved quantification and qualification of the image power, advanced feature with 3D, 4D, and even 5D in the after the end of 21st century, broadband transducer technology up to 18 megahertz with a high frequency, better data acquisition, harmonic and compound imaging, improved focusing on the lesion, beam steering capacity, as well as color Doppler flow imaging has been improved. Wide range of advanced new clinical investigation instead of expensive MI and CT. And also safety for the user with avoidance of radiation exposure and very reliable costs. Fusion imaging has been improved and developed in the 21st century with combination of real-time capability of the ultrasound and anatomic detail afforded by the CT and MR. This is very cost effective compared with the CT and MR guidance. This benefit has been practically very useful in our image-guided biopsy of the bone lesions and early in situ tumor lesions. It can translate to a biopsy of the musculoskeletal soft tissue muscles and an evaluation of the post-traumatic musculoskeletal injury. Additionally, this fusion software can be utilized in the sacroiliac and facet joint injection as well, instead of using our CM. Microvascular imaging is a one specific contrast enhanced ultrasound in order to detect the flow in order to detect the tumor process, in order to detect the infection and inflammation process. As a super microvascular imaging SMI, is a prototype technique which can depict the microvascular flow in the soft tissue and superior to the ordinary Doppler ultrasounds, even evaluating in the breast muscles, thyroid, testicular tissue, and even brain tissue as well. Volumetric ultrasound technology has been under the development for the last several years. This innovative technology has been used to create an image with more depth and detail than the traditional sonogram, like tumor morphology assessment and even cardiac function as well. Sonoelastography is ultrasound can assess tissue elasticity under the real time analysis by measurement of the tissue displacement on the real-time movement. This clinical application on the sport injury, like tendoagilis tendinitis, lateral epicondylitis, extent and degree of the tendinosis around the rotator cuff. In 2020, ultrasound usage guideline has been established all over the world with the specific guideline of different anatomical lesion with wide recommendation and consensus recommendation on the it usage, it benefits advantage and disadvantage as well. It can be, we can look down in this table. So finally, advantage of musculoskeletal ultrasound is wide range like more flexible feel of the view within a short, short period. We can see the whole limb readily available in every clinical setting, starting from the emergency, elective, and even in what? Low cost, available to image the patient with who are the contraindication for the MRI. Lesser artifact when imaging patient with the surgical hardware, dynamic evaluation of the patient, 
resolve the final imaging detail and clinically high safety and non-invasive procedures. So it can detect different musculoskeletal lesion and also it can assist to the surgeon for the interventional guidance, monitoring treatment response. In case of the rheumatoid arthritis, also arthritis as well as infection. Dynamic evaluation for the impingement syndrome, joint stabilization and dislocation as well. But there are some limitations for the ultrasonography because it is highly operator dependent features. It need steep learning curve, highlight the importance of the standardized protocol as well as professional education and expertise throughout the clinical experience. Ultrasonic waves are the transmitted neither through bone nor air, which can visit its usage. We need a good knowledge of anatomical structure as well as the sono anatomy, examination technique, knowledge of how to achieve the correct machine adjustment for the best image quality. Before my conclusion, I would like to give some takeaway talk. It is recognized advantage of the modality include the readily availability of the disc equipment in every clinical setting, relatively low cost of the procedure compared with the advanced imaging, such as CT and MI, and all the examination usage are non-organizing radiation, are quite safety to the user. There are a wide range of clinical application from the diagnostic as well as therapeutic and even the palliative care procedures. For the upper extremity scanning, linear transducer is the most frequently used. It is available in every setting, even in the outpatient clinic. Novel ultrasound imaging technology has been evolving throughout the years. The refinement in the US technology continue to expand capability and application of the medical ultrasound in many clinical frontiers with the learning opportunity for the various clinical specialties. Ultrasound technology meet the basic criteria for the accuracy, safety, affordability, and efficacy. It can available to perform the studies in real time and possible correlation of the physical clinical features of the musculoskeletal disease as well. So with that all presentation, I think I roughly briefly cover the, all the usage and events in the technology of the ultrasound. Thank you very much for your kind presentation. Thank you, Professor Miyatong, for an excellent uh, talk and uh, on uh, the advances in musculoskeletal ultrasound, right from the beginning, the evolution, the various applications, and uh, finally, the recommendations, the latest recommendations which have come in 2022. I'm sure this uh, talk will prove to be very, very useful to all the participants today. So with that, I would like to invite uh, my colleague uh, Shivani from Sri Lanka to introduce our panelists today. Shivani, over to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shishadri. Thank you, Professor Min, for the insightful session. So today in this second series of Prime Talk, we have Dr. Dilsan Muridasa from Sri Lanka as a panelist. And it's my pleasure to introduce him today on this global platform where doctors have joined from multiple countries such as Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Uganda, Kenya, and South Africa. So our panelist, Dr. Dilsan Munidasa, is a consultant orthopedic surgeon from National Hospital of Sri Lanka. Currently, he is the president of Sri Lanka Orthopedic Association. He is also specialized in sports surgery, orthoplasty, and spine surgery. So we welcome you in this forum and thank you for joining despite of your busy schedule. 
Now, sir, we would like to hear your views or your perspective on the topic musculoskeletal ultrasound and how significant or relevant the imaging in day-to-day -day practice. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, I must first thank Prof. Ming Tong uh, for giving uh, a very uh, broad view of uh, the ultrasound usage for orthopedic surgeon. I think uh, uh, currently uh, ultrasound is uh, indispensable from orthopedic practice uh, because it is being used in most of the musculoskeletal diagnosis and treatment procedures. So uh, my view is uh, every orthopedic surgeon should have some uh, kind of uh, knowledge uh, to use ultrasound uh, uh, diagnostic procedures and uh, in Sri Lanka uh, I would say uh, uh, Sri Lankan trainees are not currently uh, getting a training on ultrasound but in other countries I knew, I know they are doing uh, uh, ultrasonic courses for the uh, orthopedic trainees because I think it is nowadays called orthopedic surgeons as uh, Prof. Ming Tong said, a lot of values that uh, in a surgeon can uh, get used of. So uh, as the president of Sri Lanka Orthopedic Association, I have planned uh, new trainees for a uh, series of uh, orthopedic ultrasound uh, uh, training courses. Uh, in future, we are going to introduce into the orthopedic uh, trainees curriculum as well. It is, I believe that is, it is uh, indispensable for our day-to-day -day practice. Uh, when I come to the, our clinic practice uh, as surgeons in SOFA, um, we used to give some intraarticular injections, some acromial basal injection, uh, uh, some, uh, many other uh, injections. Uh, I think a uh, lot of studies in uh, other countries have shown that if we have used uh, uh, ultrasound, uh, the results are better than uh, uh, sort of just feeling and uh, uh, going through uh, to the plane of tissue that we are indented. Uh, so therefore, uh, uh, in an experienced surgeons who has done, who has developed their career during the time of uh, uh, ultrasound was not so readily available, might uh, uh, do a good job, but uh, as the uh, newer techniques are available, I think we must make sure that our new trainees uh, should have hand which has proven that better outcome can be achieved with the ultrasonic uh, usage during clinical practice, uh, not only the diagnostic as a therapeutic uh, modality, as uh, Prof. Ming Tong has uh, very widely uh, taught us the, uh, many, many uses that a surgeon can uh, uh, use. On the other hand, he also showed us that newer uh, technologies, which I we have not exposed to, uh, have better uh, tissue delineation and made a uh, wide range of uh, uses in uh, orthopedic practice. Uh, so, uh, my view uh, is that uh, ultrasound is indispensable from a surgeon, uh, orthop particularly orthopedic uh, musculoskeletal surgeons. Uh, so therefore, it's a timely topic, and I uh, thank you, Prof. Ming Tong, for that uh, wonderful talk and also the organizers uh, for uh, allowing me to be joined with your uh, valuable discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Darshan Maridasa for uh, your comments and uh, sharing as to how important is musculoskeletal ultrasound in the orthopedic surgeon's practice and in surgeries. Uh, I would uh, request uh, Professor Mintong in case if you would like to engage in any discussion with the, uh, Dr. Dilsan, or if you have any uh, points to uh, discuss with Dr. Uh, Dilsan, uh, we can do that, or we can move to question and answer, sir.
Thanks for your comment. Thanks for your comment. Even though I am not the technological expert in this field, so luckily we do have a lot of ultrasound machines, even in the outpatient setting, in our theater setting, as well as handheld ultrasound is available in our ward. So not only the musculoskeletal disorders, but also we do have a lot of diabetic food ulcer problem. So about 20 to 35% of our inpatients what is occupying with the diabetic food. So a lot of cases with PAD and associated ulcer as well. So with the usage of the our handheld Doppler ultrasounds in order to detect the distal perfusion of the ischemic limb. It is also very helpful, as well as sometimes even in the, with the presence of the ASAs, we can see the wound bedding and collisions of the exudations inside the wound as well. It is also very useful. I'm just wondering whether uh, I just want to get your idea. In our orthopedic residential training, in our developing countries. There are a wide range of uh, subspecialty trainings. We send them to the imaging department, we send them to the rehabilitation department, we send them to the pain care centers, uh, even we send them to the, our tumor clinic as well. What is your idea whether our residential training should include some of the a basic radiological musculoskeletal ultrasound technologies in order to interpret our lesions. Because what I found in our country is uh, our orthopedic juniors are very much relying on the radiological report only rather than interpreting themselves, the feeling and correlation between the radiological pictures and this, this practice is, I think it is missing in, in this new era. So what, what do you think as the president of the Sri Lanka? Yeah, you're yeah, quite experience? correct. Yeah, yeah, quite correct. Uh, because what trainees do like, uh, like to look at the MRI report and the uh, yeah. uh, ultrasound report. Uh, while uh, some of those, I believe, they themselves, as you correctly said, uh, can diagnose not only that, what they see is a sort of static view, uh, but uh, as a surgeon and uh, radiologist, you know uh, how to, make the, for example, if you are looking for impingement and what is the position that uh, you, it will cause impingement and you know better than the radiologist uh, uh, to do this manual. Sometimes they report you with no impingement, but the patient is clinically. But uh, you are the clinicians, and you uh, you know what position. Then you can make mimic the position. And I, actually speaking, you are at a better position than a radiologist uh, to uh, see uh, the what is happening actually inside. Uh, as you correctly say. Uh, it's a, as a, when it come to a dynamic procedures, uh, not as a static thing, and you as a cancer, no other way because it, otherwise you got to call uh, a radiologist to your uh, OPD. Rather, you if you know the basic physics and then uh, you know how to uh, 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 do uh, do the procedure. It's a bit of a knowledge of technical uh, how to handle the probe and how to use the machine and what, what probes that you use and what is the mode that you use, those things. Uh, can, if you are taught, I think uh, uh, clinicians would excel better than uh, uh, radiologists to, uh, in their own practice. I don't say I uh, will be sort of, they are not going ahead with the radiologist, but for your their own practice, for, for example, protective cuff tears, uh, impingement, and, uh, and then, even sometimes uh, we find our 
orthopedic trainees, they go through the MRI report to see whether there's a rotator cuff, but they don't look at the films to see how it is being, uh, how, how, how it is being visualized in the films. So I think as a tra uh, in future, uh, every orthopedic surgeon uh, in a part be a, a sonographer. Another thing, another thing is in our working atmospheres, uh, what I found is there's some deficiencies in cross-professional integration. In our, in our own practice, when I was young, our teachers usually send us to the imaging department and let us sit down together with our radiologists, imaging specialists, because we know the patient, we know about the patients. Whenever we go to the MI department or CT department, or even in the ultrasound technology, we sit down together with our technician and our radiologist together. And this kinds of integration is very much important for the patient's safety, as well as the efficient care and body, rather than just sending the paper to them and let them know some that and just read the comment is, I think it is not a way for the optimal patient care. Thank you, uh, Professor Yandong and uh, Dr. Dalsan Bunikasa for your interesting engagement and probably setting a uh, uh, for the future as the upcoming uh, orthopedics, the junior orthopedics can be better in upon the ultrasound techniques and can probably handle uh, some part of that on their own better or optimize the patient care. So with that, we are approaching towards the conclusion of our prime talk two, the cochlear prime talk two. And with that, I would like to invite uh, our country head, uh, Mr. S. Ramasubramanian, to deliver the vote of thanks to all our uh, delegates and attendees today. Over to you, Ramasubramanian. Thank you, Mr. Sishadri. Uh, good day to you all. Uh, and I uh, sincerely thank from my part of my heart, uh, Professor Mintong, because uh, he is considered to be the uh, guru here in uh, Myanmar when it comes to orthopedic. And uh, when we went to him with this subject, I know he was uh, really overwhelmed. He said, yeah, though this is not my, uh, I'm not technically this thing, but you know, this, I would like to pick up this subject because this is very, very important subject. I want to really uh, set a trend for the young upcoming orthopedician. So thank you very much, uh, Professor Mintong, for sparing your valuable time. And uh, it, it's really a excellent uh, learning for the uh, participants, I would believe. And I essentially thank uh, uh, Dr. Dilshan Munidasa. I think, you know, he, he came with a very different uh, perspective and uh, quite knowledgeable and sharing the uh, practices in Sri Lanka across uh, the EMB here. So thank you very much, sir, for your uh, valuable time and uh, your sharing your uh, knowledge. And I uh, sincerely thank and appreciate uh, our commercial excellence uh, team headed by Mr. Sharad Patel. I think, you know, this is uh, one of the new initiative, you know, we have taken like we at Zydus is dedicated to life. We want to really empower the people to live a very healthier, happy life. And by, if we want to achieve that, I think, you know, we have to create a platform where uh, the continuous medical education uh, for the latest uh, happening things. So I think I must uh, appreciate our commercial excellence team for bringing such program. And uh, thank you, Sharat, for uh, this. And we look forward to uh, many such programs which will benefit uh, the entire medical fraternity and, of course, the treatment outco outcomes for the patient to live better and healthier. And I must... Thank all the participants because you know any program you know we can uh, uh, initiate, but the success of the program is uh, from the participation of uh, the doctors. So I must thank uh, doctors across the globe, uh, right from uh, South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, 
uh, Myanmar, Sri Lanka. So thank you very much. And I only my request is that kindly spread uh, you know this information to your colleagues so that you know when we do such programs, uh, we have much more participation, which will encourage us to do more, many more programs such as this. So thank you once again, uh, uh, all the participants. And this program would not have been possible, successful with the participation of every Zidan, because you know, I know like each and uh, every day, you know, Zidas meet the doctors in different difficult, challenging situations. And to uh, 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 spread the continuous medical education. So I sincerely thank uh, all the Zidans across the EMB for uh, bearing the touch and providing the best of their care for our customers. So thank you very much and uh, see you all in our next uh, prime talk. Thank you and good day to you. Thank you.